Hello everyone, it has been a couple of weeks since I posted my last video on this YouTube channel and I thank you so much for all of your patience and your support. The reason why I haven't been able to post any videos lately was because I was working predominantly from home from this new remote editing workstation. And yeah, because it is a new workstation or a new desk, I thought I'd give you a small little tour about what's on my desk. So this is my new desk setup. First and foremost, you have seen it in the introduction, this is a standing desk. I can move it up and down depending on if I want to sit or if I want to stand. And this table is from Ergo Solutions. I bought it, I would say three or four weeks ago. And I have to say, this was a really cool investment to be able to stand once in a while while you are working on your computer is actually pretty good and especially when i start to fall asleep a little bit i just <laughs> switch on the button raise the desk up and then i stand while i am working or answering emails and obviously whenever i'm not standing i'm sitting down on this herman miller aaron chair this was quite the investment and i have to admit when i considered buying this chair i was really hesitant because this is actually if you buy it new a very expensive chair i think it goes around 1400 euros new however 10 years ago, I, I believe it was 10 years ago, I bought this refurbished for around 680 euros, which is quite the bargain. And considering that I was using this chair almost every single day for 10 years, yeah, it made its money worth. And it only has like one blemish on the seat area. And that's about it. It was probably the best investment in terms of desk or business purchases that is yeah as mentioned it is quite pricey and even if i would have bought it for the full price i would still not have regretted buying this this is just one of the best chairs that i have ever sat on and one of the main reasons why i wanted to buy this chair i'm only 170 centimeters tall therefore to have a proper seating position with my elbows in the right angle on the desk i need to raise the chair quite high and usually with normal chairs when i raise it up the arm rests always bump against the table so i want to have armrests that I could lower as far as possible while being comfortable but still not prohibit me to roll the chair underneath the table so that was one of the reasons why I chose this chair and obviously because it is so comfortable and now after 10 years I can also say it is very well made and is extremely durable so yeah pricey investment but definitely worth it if you are working on a desk for longer periods of time and you have to recognize that if you take a cheaper chair and that chair potentially gives you back issues health issues going to the doctor that will be much more expensive than having to invest in a good chair then after we have this out of the way i think let's go over the heart of this desk setup which is obviously my computer i have been editing on a 2017 macbook pro touch screen which works great but it has some issues and it isn't that fast so Considering I will be working from home for quite a while, I invested in a 2020 27-inch iMac, which is a 5K display with a 3.8 GHz 8-core Intel Core i7 with 64 GB of RAM and the AMD Radeon Pro 5700 XT 16GB. For me, it was very important to have a proper graphics card and a lot of RAM and I watched a bunch of reviews that said that the higher or the, the better processor doesn't have a lot of benefits when it comes down to editing in Premiere or in Avid. So I opted to get the cheaper processor but then highly invest into the better graphics card and into RAM. And up to now I'm really happy with the iMac. It works great and the only thing that I 
Yeah, I don't really like it considering that the MacBook Pros and Apple's stance overall is to push USB-C as strongly as possible that there are only two Thunderbolt USB-C ports on the iMac and then having four USB-A ports. Yeah, that seems to me like a little bit of an afterthought. I think the four USB-A ports are incredible. I need all of those ports, but just having two USB-C ports, yeah, it seems strange. Considering that one of the ports is already occupied with my Blackmagic Ultra Studio HD Mini, that device is to output all of the feed of the editing software from Premiere or Avid that I can output the sound and the video via SDI or HDMI out. I don't need that that often, but I will work on a system where I can output everything that's inside the editing software and output that to a video call. That's what I'm currently working on. And at the moment I have the Blackmagic cinema camera 4K, which is filming me at the moment, connected to an Elgato cam link. So I used basically a cinema camera as an overkill webcam. Obviously you don't need that, but yeah, you want to have a very professional appearance. And I feel like that a 720p webcam in my iMac or in the MacBook Pro isn't sufficient enough. So I opted to attach a camera as a webcam. So as mentioned, on the one USB-C port, I have the Blackmagic Ultra Studio HD Mini. And on the other one, I have this USB hub that is connected to the USB port. As you can see, cable management isn't really my strong side. And I feel like with shorter cables, it is very difficult to yeah, properly manage cables. But for that, I also got this little aluminum case stand where the iMac is standing on. And inside I have this two little trays where I store my small little hard drives and connected them via USB cables. This is actually pretty nice. Then on the back of the iMac, I have a Carl Digit hub. I used it to connect it to my MacBook Pro. It has a monitor display out, a couple of USB outputs, but also it provides power to the MacBook Pro. Now I only use this Carl Digit USB-C hub to attach the LG monitor via this um, display port. And yeah, that's basically about it. The cam link is attached to it because it is a little bit bigger. And yeah, there's this widescreen LG monitor. I love that thing. I really like working on the widescreen, but obviously since the iMac has an own monitor, I now have this dual screen option, which gives me a lot of real estate. I put the monitors in an angle, in a V-shaped angle, because if they are like in line in front of me, I usually don't see what's on the far ends of the monitor. So I put them in a slight V shape, a V angle to see everything a little bit better. At some point I might think about having the bigger screen on the bottom and the iMac maybe on top, but I'm not sure if that's really uh, the best way to work. Then for audio, I have this loudspeakers from PreSonus. They are awesome, they sound pretty great. They are studio monitors, so the sound is really flat, which helps a lot when you are mixing audio. Speaking of audio, for all my podcasts and if I have to do voiceovers, I have the Rode Procaster mic, and I usually record into the Zoom H4n Pro, which is an awesome external audio recorder. I can highly recommend it. And whenever I'm editing, I use the Poker 3 mechanical keyboard, which has brown Cherry MX Master brown key switches. You can actually find a review for this keyboard in the info tab above. And my mouse of choice is the Logitech MX Master great mouse. The only downside is it is, yeah, let's say thick mouse. So it's not as easy to pack into your tech pouch or whatever. This is the very first version and still works great. I can highly recommend it. And I will upgrade to the third 
generation pretty soon. Did I forget anything? Yeah, notebooks, notepad, always handy to have on your desk. A lot of water because you need to keep hydrated. But that's basically about it. Yeah, and in the back I used a little stand with some clamps for the camera attachment. And then I usually have the camera here on top. And yeah, that's basically it with all of the technical stuff. I mean, other than that, I have this absolute vodka bottle where I put some lights inside to have a little bit nice light source whenever I'm filming. I have this LED strip on top of this small little plant just to have some color on the desk, which makes it nice. I chose a white desk to have some reflectivity when I'm in the call. So it brightens up my face a little bit whenever I'm on a video chat. I prefer to have wood desks, but just for practical use case, I chose a white desk. But yeah, that's about it. That's my desk setup and I will be working on this desk setup, on this remote editing station for quite a while in the future. I don't think that the pandemic or the lockdown will stop anytime soon. I think it will get better, but... I think working from home is very relaxing <laughs> in a way. It, it does work. Internet is fast. I can edit. Usually with video calls work very well. So yeah, I think this was a good investment and I'm very happy to have this new editing setup. I will add a um, Blackmagic A2 Mini pretty soon, which will give me the possibilities or the option to switch between my webcam and the feed from whatever I'm editing. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with this setup. So yeah, that was my little desk setup tour. And yeah, I hope you liked it. And like always, if you have any more questions about this setup or maybe about how to work from home, uh, let me know in the comment section below. And like always, if you like this video, click the like button. And please feel free to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon so you won't miss next videos. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I see you in the next one. Thank you very much. <music>